Born and raised in a New England home that regularly hosted international students, Judith Sherman was drawn to Georgetown. She took a class at SFS with the legendary Jan Karski. He spoke, she says, of his dream of a future where people wouldn't be able to identify each other in any way other than as simply human. Karski instilled in her a responsibility to do something meaningful with her life. For Judith, this meant moving to Africa to battle the scourge of HIV and AIDS. She intended to stay for only two years, but Judith's residence lasted nearly three decades in Zimbabwe, Morocco, Guinea, and Malawi, including serving communities where HIV and AIDS affected as many as 35% of pregnant women. Working mainly with the young and vulnerable, Judith focused on nutrition, reproductive health, treatment for women, and human rights-based community service. She created the program Young People We Care, a national network of young people providing community service for households affected by AIDS. She also pioneered a UNICEF drone program, bringing medication to more remote and isolated communities and transporting laboratory samples for early infant diagnosis of HIV. Judith and her husband have just returned to Massachusetts. Her mission to do something meaningful became 27 years of global impact that would have made Jan Karski very proud. Unlike another young man from Hope, Arkansas, who went from Georgetown to the White House, Chad Griffin started at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and then came to SFS. The youngest ever member of a presidential staff, Chad came to the Hilltop only after his boss, D.D. Myers, made him promise to finish college. While at the White House, Chad met filmmaker Rob Reiner. They would later work together on California ballot initiatives focused on childhood education, stem cell research, and alternative energy. Together they started the American Foundation for Equal Rights to challenge the constitutionality of California's Proposition 8, which barred the recognition of same-sex marriage. Chad's vision resulted in the landmark Supreme Court case Hollingsworth v. Perry recognizing marriage equality in California and setting the stage for nationwide marriage equality just two years later. Chad became president of the Human Rights Campaign, the country's largest LGBTQ rights organization. His work stands today as a modern civil rights triumph. When the members of the SFS class of 2022 were asked to choose someone who best represented the values of their school, more chose Chad Griffin than any other SFS graduate. The oldest of seven siblings growing up outside of Houston, Texas, Austin Tice was always a larger-than-life role model. A passionate Model UN delegate and Eagle Scout, his stated ambition was to be a foreign correspondent for NPR. This hunger to engage with the world led him to pay his own way to SFS in 1999. Fueled by idealism, hard work, and talent, Austin enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps after one semester at Georgetown Law. Between deployments, Austin continued at law school. The growing conflict in Syria galvanized his desire to make a difference. So he took photography classes and returned to the Middle East as a freelance writer and photographer in the summer of 2012. Austin filed reports for the Washington Post, the BBC, McClatchy, Al Jazeera, and other outlets from the earliest moments and most intense sites in the Syrian conflict. On August 14, 2012, Austin was leaving Syria to go to Lebanon when he was detained at a checkpoint near Damascus. A worldwide movement calling for his release has grown to include the Washington Post and the New York Times editorial boards, as well as thousands of individuals around the globe. Less than a month after his capture, Syrian demonstrators eloquently testified to Austin's impact. Holding aloft posters bearing his picture, 
and calling for his release. Freedom for Austin Tice, one stated in Arabic, who lighted Syria with his lens.